So this is Agent Financials, and as Wendy just said, this is an all-day course, but we will just kind of go over some basic stuff within an hour. But there are some um, spreadsheets and some things that I can send you to get us started, and then I'm also always willing and able to sit down and work with anyone in a little bit more detail, but it'll just kind of be an overview. You guys all ready? Mm -hmm. So this is on your on your financials, your P&L, your your um, chart of accounts. It's it's taken from the MREA book. Um, all of your all the financials in there. So you're first of all trying to get a financially sound business. You want to set a profit goal to fund your big life and pursue the activities to achieve it. Estimate, save for, and pay your taxes on time. Very important. Use the proven models and systems, which I'll show you a lot of them, um, both from the MREA Chair of Accounts and the Career Growth Initiative. Be fiscally savvy, savvy by reviewing your financials monthly. I'll show you guys how to do that. Pay yourself a salary and prepare now for a financially secure future. It's a great way to get your business started, especially. So you have two kind of, you know, the financial health of your business. There's two different ways to kind of go about it. Um, you can have a sound business, financial health and an unsound. If, it's, if it inhibits your opportunity and growth, reduces your effectiveness, it takes a lot of your time, creates unneeded stress, and it can be very expensive. Benefits of having a sound and it under control, worry and stress-free, allows you to take advantage of opportunity, frees up to do more, makes your money work for you, and prepares you for challenging times. So it's really good to be on top of your numbers. You know, for the company I... You know, John asks me every day, what's our profit going to be at? I have to know what the numbers are going to be all throughout the month. He can ask me any time. I have to report to him every Friday. Um, I know the history. I know what we were doing last year, this month. And it really makes for an easier month to know exactly where you are and what you have coming up. So, yes. So, this is if you go about... This can be an unfinancially sound how you can get a commission check. Okay? You get a $9,000 commission check. You take out your cost of sales. Cost of sales, which is taken out every single time you do um, a closing. <clears throat> it's your company dollar, your royalties, anything that you may pay to a buyer's agent, something like that. So after your cost of sales is taken out, you're ended with $5,760. You put it in your bank account, yeah. your personal bank account, and you go ahead and start spending it. Okay? Not tracking anything, not taking anything out for savings or for taxes. A more financially sound way to do it, which is how we'll figure out how to get there, is you get your $9,000 commission. There's the check that gets paid to you. Take 100% of it, put it into your business account. And now, after your 30% of expenses, because that's how your, that's how the chart of account works, is 30% cost of sales, 30% should be taken out to your business expenses, 40% can go into your personal bank account. You have not paid your taxes yet. So now you have to think of, you need to take out 40% of that, that goes to your taxes. You can put it into a tax savings account. This is what's remaining to go into your wallet. So you always got to think of that bottom number when you're getting that commission check. It's very hard to look at that $9,000, and that's what you're coming away with to be completely safe and secure. You have state and federal, and you also have self-employment tax because you guys are independent contractors. Okay, we're going to show you how you get there. So again, like I just said, one transaction, $9,000 commission, there's your net paycheck, $2,419 goes in your pocket. Expenses paid for and your taxes are saved for. Here it looks like, oh, sorry, what, what do you achieve by getting that? Well, you get everything taken care of. I'm sorry, this is a net, and this is, sorry. So that, but that is the example. I thought it had commissions, but that will come up in a little bit. Shows you when you have cap on your cost of sales, which is your company dollars and your royalties, and um, and it, you know, show you exactly what that'll be coming up. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> so this is like a this is like a financially a fitness assessment that you can look at, and this is something that I just printed out for you guys. It's it's about setting up your profit goal. It's have you written a budget. This is kind of something that you want to look at to see if you have in place. And if not, it's something that you can put into place. But these are some of the first things that you really need to look at for your business to make sure you have some things planned that you're going to be using. Okay? So when you look at that, it says, have you stated a profit goal for the year? 
you know, to use the P&L, that's everything we're going to learn about. Saving for your taxes, keeping all your receipts, paying yourself a regular salary, using the chart of accounts, which I will give you a copy of. All of that, so what I want you to do, we won't really do it in here, but when you have some time, look through that list, go through what you have and what you don't have. If there's some things on there that you guys don't have, come to me and we can figure out how to get it all set up for you to get you guys started on this. So this is where it shows the economic model of the MREA book, okay, and this is your cost of sales. So this is showing 100% of your gross commission, your cost of sales is 30%, and your operating expenses. The cost of sales, again, company dollar, royalties, things you're paying to buyer's agents. Your operating expenses is everything else, your advertising, your marketing, your um, every business expense, your car, everything that you have there, that's going to show your net profit and your income, 40% of that should be going directly to you guys. So when you look at it from a commission, you've got $10,000 commission, you're taking $3,000 of it going to your cost of sales, $3,000 of it going to your operating expenses, $4,000 going to your profit. You look at it from, and how Keller Williams likes to look at things or how the MREA does it. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. But you can see your cost of sales. They're, they're really, the percentages are really important so you can predict you know, what you have coming up, what your money is going to be at the end of the month, what it's going to be at the end of the year. So you really want to keep track of that, see where you are on everything, so you know what you can predict of what your income is going to be coming up. So it's a good thing to keep tabs on and to keep an eye on. And again, the, you know, the MREA book just got this all from, from working with many agents over many of years of where to come up with this. So your next thing is the flow of money. We kind of do it differently. There's two different ways. Income, what goes in, expenses, what goes out, profits, what's left. How the MRA they book likes to do it is they like to you to figure out what is your goal, what is your profit first. And then they like to know what your expenses are, and then your income, how many sales do you have to sell to get there. That's, that's how we like to do things. That's how the MRA book is done, and that is called the the, um, is economic, it's the economic model worksheet. This is not in the slide, but this is something that you can fill out. I can also send you as an Excel spreadsheet. And this you write in what you want to make first. It shows you all the percentages then, and at the end of it, it's going to show you how many listings, how many sales, everything you have to do to achieve that goal. It's a really good thing. Again, this is all for that G CGI tool. Everything that's something that we can sit down and go through together. But if you have that idea in your mind of the profit that you want at the beginning, it's much easier for you to have an idea every month you know you're going into how many listing appointments, how many deals do you have to get to hit that profit. Again, it's a nice number <coughs> to be ahead of and, um, and to know what's, what's ahead. Again, it's what's, co what's coming in and what's going out. Your commission is coming in, it typically includes 3%. You get 3.3 on the list side, 2.7 on the sale side, so you can average it out to be the 3.6. Your income coming in is your listing income, your sales income, any referral income, and any leasing that you may do for any of your transactions. That's all the income you're going to get that's going to be coming in. Coming out is your cost of sales and your operating expenses. Again, the cost of sales, company dollar, royalties, all of your expenses, everything associated with you being in business. It can show you again, the commissions paid, royalties, splits to any buyer's agents and any outside referral fees you may have to pay. That's what's coming out no matter what. It can show you your effect on your net. 9,036%. It's gonna give you the $5,760. If you've already capped on royalty but not a company dollar, you're gonna have a 30%. You're going to end up with 6300 When you capped on everything, you're ending up with your $9,000, which all of you are working to do. You can see, again, huge difference. You know, Keller Williams, on average, takes just under about $3 million in volume to cap. So if you can get that done in your annual period, you cap and you take 100% of that income. It's a big difference. It makes a big difference on your, on your bottom line. <clears throat> Some of your operating expenses, rent, auto, any salaries you may have, insurance, any of your professional services, marketing, equipment, all your CE, all the education, and we're going to also go into all of the stuff that's going to be tax deductible. 
So that's what's going out. That's what's got to be in that 30%. Everything in there has got to be that 30%. What's left over is your profit. So you can grow your business, invest in your business, put it back in the future. So just look through that. Think of, think of some of the things that you, you know, how can you get to that business? How can you get to that $3 million and, and get that capped and get that paycheck way up there? <clears throat> Something that's very important with your finances, with everything, especially as an independent contractor, you need a really good financial team in place. You need CPAs. I'm not a CPA. Um, you need to be able to go to them to get, they know their taxes. They know all the tax laws that are up to date on everything. I went around, I asked several of our agents here, of some bookkeeper CPAs that they use. They gave me a list, and also a good banker is a good person to have, because you need those commercial accounts and those personal accounts. So we work with Flagship Bank as our market center. Terry and um, Jackie are both there. They both know the real estate uh, real estate side of all your bank accounts. We have tons of agents that go there and use them. It's a great list of people to use. You can find a bookkeeper, a monthly bookkeeper, for not too expensive. Send them all of your all of your expenses, everything. They can send you a monthly, and it's also you guys really easy for you guys to track too that um, right through QuickBooks, there's several systems that I'll show you that you can use, and that'll really keep a good eye on your expenses and be perfect in line for the accountant when you do go to the CPA at the end to get all your taxes done at the end of the year. So I would really, I would, I would look into that and make sure you have some good people, and there's some good people in mind on there. I also have attorneys, financial agents, financial planners, and coaches available for you guys. I just didn't include it on the list. Those first three are kind of the first three that you really need to start with. If you don't have them in place, I'd really think about getting them in place soon, and especially that business checking account, which we'll get into in a little bit too. But yeah, they're, they're, they're needed and important to really get the best um, financial advice for your company, because you are all independent contractors. So really, start you know working on them. If you guys need any more suggestions, just let me know and we'll get that list together. And on the banking side of it, Really, another thing you guys should have is, is your business checking account put in place. You should really keep this separate. Um, like we said, it's, it makes for that financially sound business. It's um, much less stuff that you can deduct at tax season and everything. If you're putting it into a business account, into a business, you're going to get much more, a lot more deductions out of there. So it's something to keep in mind. It's very easy to, to get that business set up through the Secretary of State. It doesn't take long. It doesn't cost much and it can really save you in the long run. So it's definitely something that I could give you more details on and I could help you get all that stuff set up too, but just keep that in mind. Those are the different accounts you should have. Even for your credit card, you should have a business credit card. A business credit card is kind of nice to have because it'll show you all of your expenses right on your monthly thing. You can pay it off at the end of the month. Also get some maybe some bonuses with it. Um, but it's a good thing that will show every expense you have very easy again to give your accountant at the end of the year to have your taxes done very easily. It's a nice way to do it. And just make sure you keep that personal credit card and the business card separate, and it'll be much easier to track everything for you. And there's some different business entities that you can choose from, the sole proprietorship, the partnership, the LLC, and the corporation. The sole, the sole proprietors, um, you guys assume all the risk. The money is not and your money's not protected as with other entities. If you do get sued on a sole proprietorship, they could come after you personally. So it's something you want to keep in mind as a sole proprietorship. Um, you do receive all profit after taxes. You do have all responsibilities for losses and debts. So it's another thing to keep in mind. Business incomes and expenses are reported on Schedule C as part of a personal income tax form. Okay, if you do a partnership, that's more, um, they're, they're pretty, that would be more with a partner. It's a easy to form, typically with no state filings. Um, partners receive profits and each report their own share of profit on loss. And um, partners are equally responsible for all profit and loss. So something to keep in mind. The limited liability company. An LLC combines the structure of a corporation with the routine of a partnership. The company can be owned by one person or more than one and provides limited liability and the tax advantages of a partnership. 
you create your LLC by filing some documents with your state. Again, going on the Secretary of State's website, really easy to do. The benefits of that is shields your personal assets. You don't commingle your business and personal money. The owner of the LLC may not be personally responsible for business debts. Flexible tax reporting options. Insurance costs may be less. Option to raise money for the business by selling membership interest. Option to be taxed like a sole proprietor or a corporation. And may increase your personal image. It, it you know, just looks different having an LLC. I, that's if you want to have something on your business card. I don't think it's a huge thing, but something they say. And then your corporation, which is the S Corp or the C Corp. The corporation, the corporate entity is most common form of business organization. It shields your personal accounts. Again, you do not commingle. It's two separate tax returns. You don't mix it together, the business and the personal. The S Corp works more of a pass-through entity, meaning the business itself is not taxed. Owners pay personal income on the tax, on, personal income tax on profits, and owners may be treated as employees with a salary. A C Corp, income is taxed at a corporate level. Owners have limited liability. Personal assets are protected, and owners may be treated as employees with a salary. So kind of a basic understanding of the different business entities you guys can create. Again, very easy to go on and get a checking account tied to it. Make some sense? Yeah? Kind of? And that again, a great thing to talk to an accountant. He's going to tell you what's going to be best for you on your tax returns, what's going to work most with your deductions and the things that you have with the amount of money you have coming in. Um, something, you know, a lot of people that investment properties have a separate LLC for each investment property. So it's something very easy to do, very inexpensive to do through the Secretary of State. So it's something to keep in mind, very easy, very helpful. Now one of the most important things about your business, do you guys have questions so far? Do you see where I'm going and what we're saying? Something coming up very important that you guys have to do is your taxes. Okay, your guys' taxes as independent contractors, they are really due, um, you know, they're due four times a year, okay? Um, April 15th is when you have to file your taxes, but you guys as independent tax, as independent contractors are supposed to budget and pay your taxes four times a quarter, four times a year. So you need to pay them on June 15th, September 15th, January 15th, and April 15th. And April 15th is when you pay them, also pay your fourth quarter, and when you need to send everything in. You should be budgeting for those. You should um, have, when you have your goals in place and your budget in place of what you think your income is going to be, that money should be put aside and sent in for your taxes. All these dates should be recorded. You should know all of them, and you should make sure you send all of that in on a timely basis. If not, you could have fines and fees. It's, it's your... Um, it really is, is your guys' responsibility as um, independent contractors. That's something to your CPA, your tax accountant, he's going to know about it, he's going to help you budget for that. You're going to know that number and you can get that sent in on those dates and it'll really help you, help you save through some of that. You have different taxes you have to pay. You have to pay your income, your federal and your state. You guys as independent contractors, self-employment and employment tax. Um, if you guys file an extension, the only thing you're filing an extension for is sending in your paperwork, sending in all of your detail. You're not filing the extension to pay your taxes. They expect it on time, and if you don't get those paid, they, you, you can get penalties, fines, everything associated with that, and it is not cheap, and it, it can really add up. Um, Can you use the IRS Form 1040 has yes, to calculate estimated tax and submit payment. The tax base is based on your earnings, your deductions, your spouse's income, and, and lots of other stuff. It shows you if you pay yourself a salary. This is some of the deductions. This is another way you can do it as a corporation. It shows your profit goal, what your, month, what your monthly pay would be, what you're putting aside for taxes and what's left over. It's something to keep in mind, you guys. If you get a little bigger, if you're already in place, something you can, when you get that profit goal, when you get that budget, something to look at, instead of just taking all that commission and putting it right into your account, paying yourself a monthly salary, it'll give you some tax benefits there. You'll know exactly how much money you're making every month, and then you'll know exactly how much money you need to take out for your taxes. 
it's a good, a good thing to look at. Here are some of the difference between your personal and business expenses. Some can be personal, some are business, and some are both. You want to make sure you know the difference between all of them. We would normally sit down and complete this together. I just kind of want to show you a list of, of where they fall. Your account fees are for your business. Automobile is for both gas, and we'll go over some deductions that you can have with your automobile. Your business cards, your cell phones, both. Clothing is obviously for yourself. Your computer can be both. So you've got to make sure you really take a good look at what you see as personal and business and make sure you're keeping that in mind when you are doing your deductions. Here's a list, a checklist of a lot of deductions that are available to all of you guys for tax time. Things that you don't always think of. It's a pretty long list. Take a look through them. I think you have quite a few on there. Some things that you might not think of that is there and can help you in that advantage of your tax returns. Auto deductions, home office, entertainment meals, travel, all of that can be deducted from your business expenses. Um, and again, it's just the information on income tax, employment tax, self-employment tax. When you have employees, you must hold, withhold your self-employment tax. Is a Social Security and Medicare tax for individuals who work for themselves and earn $400 or more. This tax is based on your net business income. You pay 15.3% of your net business income up to $132,900. And it drops to 2.9% for income over that. So that self-employment tax, again, pretty big expense. It's got to be paid. It's a Social Security and Medicare your federal income tax withholding, and your federal unemployment tax. Um, again, all the annual taxes, too, can be different for self-employed, sole proprietorship, your LLCs, and your corporations, your S-Corps and your C-Corps. So you'll really want to make sure you take a great look at that and see exactly where you need to be for that. And again, those expenses should help you. Those deductions should help you. Auto deductions. I'm not too sure if you guys are aware, but auto deductions can be done two different ways. You guys are in your car a lot. You have a lot of miles that you put on your car. A mileage allowance for the tax year of 2018 was 0.545 per mile. That was your mileage allowance. So if you put on 15,000 miles, you can deduct $8,175 for an auto deduction. And this is just a couple deductions I want to show you. You can either do your auto deduction in two different ways. You can do it by mileage, and there's tons of good mileage apps out there. Um, Mile IQ, um, there's some different mileage apps out there that I Googled just to look at, very easy. You can swipe if you're doing business. Another way to do um, another way you can do that deduction is by doing Let's say you use, I think that was in here. Let's say you use, you're guessing you use your car for 75% of, the 75% of the use is being used for business. You can take all of your auto repairs, all of your car payments, everything up. You could total all of that and you could deduct 75% of that if that's what you're guessing. You can only do one or the other, so make sure you don't do both. But it's just, that's the detail of some of the deductions that you have to look into. So just make sure you pay really close attention everything on there, um, and it would be your car payments, your registrations, your auto insurance, your repairs, gasoline, everything of that. You could say you spent $8,000 on auto expenses, take that by 75%, you have $6,000 for an auto deduction. So you can see the difference. Another thing your tax accountant is going to do, you're going to keep track of all of those things I just listed, give them to him, he's going to tell you which one's going to be a better way to deduct it. Or if you're doing it a little bit more on your own, this is how you're going to be able to calculate it and see which one's the better uh, business deduction for, for you. Can it make some sense? Mm -hmm. You can also, you, you can deduct a lease too, but again, it's something that you, you will want to check with your tax advisor on. But just keep that list in mind for the tax deductions, and um, there's lots of them out there. 
Um, home office, you can deduct part of that. So you can't deduct your whole house, but you can deduct your home office. So thanks again. The tax advisor is going to know all of that. Um, your meals, you may deduct up to 50% of your business-related entertainment meals. Your business travel, any travel, doing with any type of education, any travel, you can deduct 100% of that. Again, with your home office, it was reduced a little bit in 2017, but you can deduct that square footage. So just make sure you know exactly how much you have. Record keeping, again, another huge thing to have. It's just keeping that with the um, QuickBooks, everything. We have an MREA chart of accounts that goes right along with QuickBooks that we'll get into soon too. And that can go, um, you can put all of that in there and it's again a very easy way to record all of that, keep all of that and something you can give right to the tax, tax accountant. So, all your auto expenses. And again, just some more planning. One of your goals versus actuals, I think Dana just did the class last week on setting your goals and kind of your business plan. You know, your goals, obviously, you're, you're basing it on the vision of your big life. Your actuals, what you actually hit based on the activities you engage in. So just something to keep in mind. Make your goals a little bit more, you know, you want to make them a little bit more realistic. Get tough if you're four months in and you're so far from your goals, it's a little hard to keep looking at them. So, so make them, you know, a little bit more reasonable and, uh, and, and, and track your stuff every month so you can see where you're at. Again, that'll work perfectly with, the uh, with, um, I should be coming up too. So, for your profit and loss, so you guys should all have, I wanted to show you an example, I didn't make a copy for everyone, but this is the office profit and loss statement every month. Um, after everything is put in, my transmittal, we get the uh, market center's um, financial statement, their balance sheet and their profit and loss statement. Shows your income coming out, what did you spend, and what's left over. Your balance sheet will show your assets, liabilities, kind of what you owe, and what you, um, what you owe and what you own. So this is where you get into a little bit more detail of your P&L. Okay, this is the MREA books P&L. It's, it's, it's the profit and loss statement. It's going to have all of your expenses, everything. This is a PDF example of your chart of accounts. This is all of your expenses, all of your income coming in. It has some blank spots for you to add some more, and it also has everything that's in here. And this I'll send you guys as an Excel spreadsheet can also go right along with QuickBooks and it'll show you several of your 30% of your expenses. Some of the expenses they show here, salaries, lead gen. Again, a good thing to divide all the way out to show where your money is being spent. Education, coaching, your rent, your supplies, your technology, your auto, equipment, and then you're left with the 40%, which is your profit. And you can see this if you go through that page by page, it's gonna give you a nice, great list of everything that's in there. This is what they refer to as the MREA chart of accounts. I'll have it on the Excel spreadsheet for all of you guys and I can email that to you. Anybody use anything like that right now? Yeah? Something in place you do with your QuickBooks? Mm -hmm. You can do it through here. QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. But it'll be nice to see the different, you know, the, the different categories in here mm -hmm. and make sure that I'm not missing anything. Mm -hmm. And this one has a lot of categories in there for you. It has a, it has a lot of ideas for you in there. Yeah. So this is just an example of um, of if you you know if we were in the full class, we would definitely complete this all together, a full profit and loss statement. But this is just kind of showing you, can you guys see this a little bit? This is just showing you an example. Shows you the residential income she has coming in, 260,000. Commercial income showing a total GCI income of 270,000. She has her budget right next to her and her actuals. So she's showing them both. You can see right where you can see right where they are, right on track. Here's your total commissions paid out, $60,000. Your total cost of sales, your gross profit, 210,000. 
showing your operating expenses, total salaries, which is paying out everything, bringing you down to your net profit, $90,340. That's the detail you want to have when you have that P&L. This is something that if you had a monthly, book, a monthly bookkeeper, they could send this to you every month. You send them your expenses, send them everything you're spending, and this is something that you could put together for you on a monthly basis to keep you on track with your budget and your actuals, or I can send you this and you can do it right through there. So, nice way to keep track where you are, what's going on, and um, really just to keep you on track. And what you, if you're behind on anything, what you need to do, how you need to get there, and that's another thing we have coming up to. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's great, it's easy once you get it down, once you get it in there, once you get it started. It's a good thing with the new year right around the corner, something to get in place for the, next, for the new year. Have you done all your goals and budget for the, for 2020? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So, I just, you know, I budget at home. I have a personal budget that I go by. It's very strict. I am not like you guys. I'm not an independent contractor. I'm an employee. But it's just kind of, it's, it's just easy. I, I think it's just easier to, again, my personal budget. I just gave an example of a personal budget. It's something that I like to work on. I use it, I stick with it. It helps me plan for any emergencies that might come up. But here's a nice example of just a personal budget for your home. It's something a little easier to start with too, maybe, you know, just to kind of keep you on track, get you used to it, and, um, and how it all works. I just want to give you guys an example. It's also something that I can send you on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet. And this is an example of like one specific expense. So if you have lead gen, you have so much money um, set aside in your budget for lead gen, it's even nice to go into the detail of, of where it's being spent. And something that's, one of the most important things about where your money is being spent, you'll see how much is going to advertising, your direct mailing, and why, why this can be such a big, big plan, and which is totally in which Gary goes by and goes in the MRA book. You don't need to be, you know, you need to be concerned with where your money is going and where it's going out to, but you really, more importantly, you need to know what the results are of what you're spending your money on. So that's another thing that you, got to keep in mind and got to keep a close eye on. If you're spending $12,000 on your advertising, what are you taking in from that advertising? That's why it's really good to keep track of where your business is coming from, whether it's a referral, whether it's um, advertising, whether it's from a direct mail, the internet. It really makes you think of your budget um, a different way so um, you'll know where you might want to spend more money on and where you might want to spend less money on. You're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on, um, on maybe farming and you're not getting anything from it. Maybe it's time to look at your budget, see where you can redirect your lead gen money and where you might want it to go to to be able to get a better bang for your dollar. It's something that um, through command, through all of our systems to track where your business is coming from, how you got it, and um, something works really well for you, I would definitely consider focusing more of your dollars on that. It just makes, you know, exactly how we should be doing it. So it's something you really got to keep a close eye on and keep track of. Do you track all that, Carla? Do you see where all your business comes from? And I do, not to the extent that I'd like to, mm -hmm. because I haven't had a really good CRM, which I'm starting to see the correlation and command. Mm -hmm. um, tagging has been key to mm -hmm. being able to pull that out, but up until now it's been more manual. Mm -hmm. We aren't spending, I mean the Homer's team is spending this. Mm -hmm. Tanya and I, prior to going to the Homer's team, we're not at that level. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's why even just with your internet, with as simple yeah. as a Facebook post, mm -hmm. you know, as simple as a Facebook bo uh, boost, you know, those few dollars that you can spend into that, that's where it doesn't need to be this high, but there's things like that that you can do for just a few dollars that um, 
I know Katie V has talks of, had talked about that Facebook post that she boosted for, and I don't even think I'm using the right term there. I think when you would know that a little better than I, but that new, um, I'm hoping maybe she'll text me, but maybe in she's command. not. Yeah. Yes, in command. Yeah. Um, yeah, Katie so V talked. She did a Facebook ad. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what did that cost? It was. She put in $20. $20. And she got seven leads. Yeah. So. It's things like that where it doesn't have to be on this large amount, but that's something you'll want to do, create. Wendy can help us create. I know Wendy can help create that. Jacob, KDV, I know everyone's here to help, and that's something that, that's what you need to track. And especially those referrals. A lot of your business does come from referrals, so it's it's really focusing on the new bold. It's really focusing on your sphere, because yeah. that's where we're deciding a lot more of that, that money comes from. So it's just something to keep in mind and look out for and when you're setting your goals and keeping that budget in plan. And just, you know, always make sure you're caring for that budget. Always make sure you're keeping a close eye on it. You want to lead with revenue, um, play the red light, green light, and stick to your budget. The red light, green light, that's it exactly. That is what that refers to is knowing how much money you're putting out and what you're getting from that money. That's the biggest thing you need to look at and that's something very important. That's how you that's how you'll base your budget on. Where is the income coming from? And that can really help you with your budget. And that is something that we can do in the chart of accounts and something I can help you guys all set up if you ever want. But um, definitely keep a close eye on that and track it. A couple of other ways is from the PNL, profit and loss statement. Another way to do it is with your agent trend report. Do any of you guys look at your multi-year trends? So this is available. This is like the uh, Market Center's multi-year trends. It tracks um, everything year over year and month over month. So how you did this month compared to your month from last year. It's tracking everything you guys need to know. Your listings taken, listings taken, units, volume, closed, units, volume, GCI, everything is on here. This is available to every single one of you. Multi-year trends shows everything from the past five years. You can see it for the Market Center. This is available on your first page if you go into kw.com. Right underneath your picture, you're gonna see the reports tab. Under reports, you're gonna to go to multi-year trends. That's gonna show exactly how much money, everything you've done month to month. You guys stop in my office anytime. I can show you where that multi-year trends report is. It also will help you with your budget, see what you have going on. It's something that I print out and at our ALC meeting, I printed out for every one of our ALC members, and it's also where we get our pink and green from. You know, the closed units, closed volume, it just shows the difference. Green, you're doing okay. Pink, you need a little bit of work. You can see for the company, you know, we're a little behind on some of our stuff this year. Month on month, last, year, last month we did pretty well. So it's something to keep a really close eye on. It's good to review again. Like I told you, John expects numbers from me every single Friday. Um, I send him what's called this daily company dollar every single day. It shows exactly how much company dollar I've taken in for the month, which gives me an idea of what my profit's gonna be for the month for the company at the end of the month. Um, it's something you guys can track with knowing what commissions you have coming in with your projected closings and you'll know exactly where you're at, and it's just much easier to stay on course if you can keep an eye on so top of everything. That was under reports, and then where did you go? It should just be reports, and then it should be something called multi-year trends. Um, oh, I'm sorry, go under... KW Connect, right? No, yeah. go back where your reports are. Associates? Yeah. So it's KW Associates, and then you see your multi-year trends. There we go. And that'll be for you specifically. And that will show all of your, so it's under kw.com, associate, and then multi your trends. Heather, a, mm -hmm. does that have goals that we've set in those? Or that would not have the goals in there that you would have in your, um, in your CGI tool. Okay. But yes, it will show that. If you put your goals in there, then it does appointments, transfer. yeah, okay. it will go right into there and show how many appointments you've held and how many appointments you've gone and how many listings you've taken. And so in KW Command, are we, is this moving over there mm -hmm. eventually? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, you'll be able to have all that in there and that'll tie right so into your multi year trends. So opportunities now that we have in Command will move over to the reports? 
Um, well, the reports are more tra tracking just the numbers. Okay. So yeah, so it's kind of, you know, how when you submit your green sheet and everything that goes into my system, what I refer to as Winmore, when I give you guys a DA number in every one of your deals, that's where it's taking all this information from for your multi-year trends. Okay. So it's coming from what used to be the green sheets that you guys completed, which is now the commissions tab, which, um, which then I take that information, put it into my win more, and that's how the multi-year trends is created. Okay. So if you guys put your listing appointments in there, track it through there, put your listing appointments, it's going to come right into your multi-year trends. So again, no, you'll know if we go through and do the, um, do the, um, what am I thinking of, the chart of accounts, um, the CGI tool. When we go through there and complete that from the bottom up, going from what do you want your profit to be, what are your expenses, your cost of sales, how much money do you need to make to get that profit, that's where you can go back from there and you'll know exactly how many listing appointments, how many listings you need to take for the month to get that profit, and that will be tracked in your multi-year trends. So does it show that on there if you track that? Because I believe I see that with all my ALC. Were, yeah. Were listing appointments, does it say anything else? Yeah, your CGI appointments. So if you went in there and recorded that in there, you used to so do I, it. I was doing you were doing it in that CGI tool. Yeah. And then it would pull it right into there. It's a great way to, again, just for tracking everything. So multi-year trends, something I review all the time. Multi-year trends is on my desk at any time. You could come in and ask me for it, and it would be sitting right on the corner of my desk next to my budget that I review for sure at least weekly. So, good thing to keep track of. Just an example of what it looks like. There's where your, shows your CGI appointments, the top one. ALC members look at it, all the big teams. It's, it's a great thing to have if you're a team. You have a multi-year trends for your personal and for your team. So, again, totally on tracking. That's a huge part of this, just your budget and you're tracking and sticking to that budget and really keeping track of where your dollars are spent. Big thing, and all the tools are here available for you guys to do all of that. The chart of accounts, everything's in there. And, um, so sorry, it's something I went right past. Here's a great way to build a detailed budget. So this is another one for you guys. This gives you much more detail on a budget for real estate. If you go through this line item by line item, it um, takes out, it gives you ideas for lead gen, you know, advertising, the direct mail, education, education, coaching, books that you spent, your desk fees, um, supplies, your telephone services, your automobile, all of this. Again, I will send you in an Excel spreadsheet Great way to keep your detailed budget. <clears throat> if you do your P&L every month, you'll be able to see how, how much you are on track. Good way to keep an eye on it. I'll send you that also in an, Excel, in an Excel spreadsheet. This is just a little review of not just your financial health, but just to keep, you know, spiritual, physical, your personal life, your key relationships. It's a good thing. If your financial health is in order, if you know what's coming in, know what's going out, it's going to make everything just a little bit easier. It's nice to have that budget, see where you're at, and see where you can keep on track. Um, so you have your profit. What do you do with your profit? Put into savings plans. You guys know all about profit share, or I can give you a quick, quick thing, but. Um, you know, you've, you've got that 40% now, you've got your profit, you've got your end of the line, some things you can just um, make some savings plans, some IRAs, your pension, your 401, all of that stuff, your medical savings account, things that we have to think about as independent contractors, nobody's matching us, we all have to put that, think of that, put that in plan, and always be aware of it. Profit share, another way to act on that, investments. Maybe one day building your own team. So yeah. But just keep, um, just keep that in mind. Profit share, you guys, um, it's, you know, passive income. Investments can be some passive income. Um, um, you know, I was just referring that name to Kevin. Getting them in your downline. 
they donate, if they, if they um, pay a company dollar for the month, the market center is profitable, you receive a profit of that. Um, I believe Tony just did a class on profit share. If you want more information on profit share, it's something I would love to show you. So that's in a very quick view of what we've done. Some things that I just want you to think about and to look over. This is a checklist. And this was very quick and very short, but this is a checklist of, of what needs to be done, what you need to do to get a healthy business, okay? This is all stuff that I can individually go over and help you with at any time. Make sure you have a personal and business budget set up, set up your business entity, open an additional bank account for expenses, taxes, and other savings accounts. Download and use the MREA chart of accounts, which I will send you guys. Use QuickBooks, something like that. You've got to have that CPA in place. Um, you guys all, you'll, you'll need that tax person to help you with your deductions. They can find the best deductions for you. Something to keep track of, look at your agent trend monthly. Some type of system, which is also with the, the budget and the chart of accounts to track it each month. Complete your p &L. Make sure you're reviewing your financials. Have a time set with someone, an accountability partner, something to get that budget set up. You have 2020 coming up. It's a perfect time to really take this and build a detailed budget. Perfect time to get that chart of account set up and watch and track exactly where you're doing. And just really, all that money that's coming in, keep a really, I mean, all the money that's going out, keep a really close eye on it. Um, some very inexpensive ways to do it and see where you where you're really getting that profit out of so do you guys have some questions I know I went through this really really fast I'll send it all on Excel spreadsheets is there anything I can help you with and if you ever want to set up a separate time to really go through and get some stuff together we have tons of examples and there's lots of stuff to go through so can I just make a comment mm -hmm. this was really good even just for you so I'm looking in the room and I'm, I mean, you and I have been doing this for a little bit, but as you guys are getting started the first year, I was just like, wow, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling that way. The, and I know I did it. Yeah, and so I um, took advantage of a lot of resources that were presented to me during this time frame. One of the ones was RCU Credit Union through um, MAR, I went to Tuesdays. And a couple of things when I started, um, they, you value as either a teacher or a real estate agent, and there are a lot of perks to using their system. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things besides low income, low, low interest rates, blah, 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 on your credit card, is you can go in and categorize every single one of your expenses. So every quarter, I go in and I push a button, and it goes right, it goes into an Excel spreadsheet, and it goes right to um, my CPA, um, from, from a standpoint of expenses and so forth. That's what I was doing to begin with. Now I have a bookkeeper mm -hmm. that... And what was that through? What it's called it? Royal Credit Union, RCU. Oh, yeah. And okay. you guys, if you don't do... I mean, it is... That's the first thing I did was open up that account, and they helped me do so many things. Um, and I'm like, I... Uh, Bradford Tax is another company that came in and spoke to us. It was a investment. It wasn't an expense. It was five hundred and ninety-five dollars, and I just was like, it, it has saved us thousands of dollars. One of the things I did last year is I needed a new car because of the hands-free stuff, um, and I took advantage of the bonus. And it was a huge. They're just things incrementally that gives you tax strategies. So I would say that's like down the road, but get a, get a, uh, an account wherever you go, whether it's RCU or anyone else that you can go in and categorize your expenses that align with these categories so that when it goes into either QuickBooks or you can just push a button, it's done. You're gonna pay your CPA more if they have to upload it, mm -hmm. but it might be a balance that you get to spend time doing things that you need to do for business versus the back end book work. Okay. Um, that's probably the, the first thing. I'm actually interviewing CPAs because my CPA is not We've been using him 28 years, but he's not aligned with what Bradford Tax um, has taught us. Um, it's a different mindset. There's, you know, it's not stuff that's illegal. It's more of 
being a little bit more aggressive in how you go about categorizing things and what deductions you take and so forth. So, I'm, so Bradford Tax is not your CPA? No, Bradford Tax, if you go out and Google them, somebody, um, a gal um, came to speak to with us last year. She was one of our sponsored um, um, educational speakers. And it's a service that I signed up for. It was $595 for a subscription, and it's annual. I just renewed it. And any questions that you have, there are people online that you can either do a chat with or you can call them. And the whole idea of, in a nutshell, the Bradford was there are 184 ways in which you can, for real estate, reduce your tax liability. The key is, is figure out strategies. Pick one to three to start with. We started with those threes, we're now up to six. And so once you start going to a CPA and they no longer, you know, like our CPA would give us the tax portfolio that, you know, did you add anything to your 401k? Just basic questions. Once we started asking them questions, they're like, the game changes. They're now like, okay, these people are a little bit more savvy than just the, you know, submit your paperwork and go. Mm -hmm. um, but we now want to look for a CPA that specializes and dovetails in with what we're doing with Bradford. Okay. So I, the first thing is find a bank account that you can categorize your expenses. Mm -hmm. That's the number one thing. Number two, I use my IQ. I didn't pay for it the first year. I'm very, I'm very frugal. Um, I don't pay for things unless I absolutely have to. It takes 40 drives and then you have to pay for it. Yeah. I would um, delete any personal drives uh -huh. so it didn't count, so you can delete them. I see. So I would get, you know, so it took me a year before I'm like, okay, I'm, and it's only $59 or $49 a year. It's not even really a big deal in the scope of things, but it's like until I absolutely needed it, I didn't. I don't, literally. And that mile IQ is very easy. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, again, um, I put everything in my calendar. So like showings, like today I drove down to the office and so forth. So like when I'm sitting in the car and my husband's driving to Fargo, I'm categorizing all my mile IQ. So I will actually literally, because here's what I learned about audits. The more detail you have, the less they are going to breathe down your back. So literally I go in and say, showing in an address or the name of the people that I was with so that it's in there. And I have everything in my calendar too and I export my Google Calendar in an electronic format in case I ever get audited. Mm -hmm. You put your, your Google Calendar where? Where do you export it to? I, I, you can go into Google and export your calendar for the year that shows in line item format, not in spatially of calendar days, but in, it'll say the date, time, and what you did. Okay? Yeah. So if you ever leave wherever you're at, so it's tied to KW, but you know, if you ever get audited, I don't have a paper calendar. Uh -huh. And our CPA actually said, you need to have a separate paper calendar and just mark the crap up us, spill coffee on it, do whatever. I'm like, that's redundant to me, I'm not doing that. So I download it every, every month, I, 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 I take an export and I, I save it to a drive. Oh, okay. okay. So those are just three things that I would say. Bank account that you can categorize, mile IQ, it's cheap, it's free, um, and then graduate on. But Bradford Tax, if we could get them back again in another okay. year, they, you know, in, in 2020. They were probably the biggest game changer, and that was in my second year. Okay. And they came here? They came here. Did we have, did Bradford Tax come here, or was it? I haven't. No, no. I don't remember. There was there somebody that something. came here. But no, it wasn't Bradford Tax. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. it was two, they were here in 2018, like in June. Oh. Yeah, June or July is when they came. The last people that came was um, from Ben and Alex, so I can't remember who yeah. it was. Yeah, there was somebody, and they talked about whether you should set up a LLC or an S corp mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and that's a whole other thing. I it is all of them. Yep, yeah. all of these things are very little, and, and stuff that you do have to talk to the, the tax advisor and the CPA about mm -hmm. because it it really there's so many laws in there on top of those laws and those laws change every year on yep. your tax deductions everything yeah so it's something that you you really need that professional yeah. that, yeah, that knows with your cpa is just asking like you said you 
started asking questions, and we have worked with another nonprofit business, and we, she's in St. Cloud, and we stick with her because um, our other income is also um, self-employed, and so it just is different. It just is totally different.